The U.S. Supreme Court this week uh, decided that to, to protect uh, people's right to protest at funerals. and speech. Um, what, what will the effect of that be? Do you think Missourians will, will change their, their efforts to pass laws uh, banning it, banning such protests? Well, I think it could. I mean, we, we put the bill out today, and I think that there is a philosophical disagreement between should people have this right and, and what if you are going to put reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions, what that actually looks like. Don't get me wrong. Fred Phelps and the Westboro Baptist Church are some of the most vile people that have ever walked this earth. They are despicable, their behavior is despicable, and they are quite possibly some of the worst among us. The problem is, is that even the worst among us deserve to be able to have their voices heard and their opinions heard. That's what makes us different. That's what people are fighting for in, in all these different countries that we see on TV. Their ability to register your disagreement with something is one of the things that makes us such a great country. And when we start silencing that because of certain things, you're, you're walking down a very dangerous road, even if those people are as reprehensible as the Westboro Baptist Church. Can you help us, um, us being the, the lay people who, who are not intimately involved in the lawmaking process, um, why lawmakers sometimes just decide to spend their time pursuing laws that they know will ultimately not uh, sometimes it could be that they need to do it because it's important to people of their district. It may be that they have a philosophical belief that they want to make sure it gets registered. And sometimes it's just because it, 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 there's political expediency involved. You know, it's hard to tell, you know, which of those is the, the case. In this, obviously, in this type of a situation where you're protesting the funeral uh, of soldiers and, and fallen heroes, that is a very very divisive type of, of behavior and a very reprehensible type of behavior. But it, it may be to send a message, it may be to make sure that people know that they just they don't agree with it, they just can't get on board with the idea that, that it should be accepted, even though that is you know one of the things that we hold dearly as a country. I, I haven't read the actual decision yet, but d don't we make some constitutional protections for, or, or don't, don't we make some ex exceptions for hate speech? Yes, there is. And, and that is where sometimes I think that we need to look at how we draft these bills and, and how we do some of these things and make it look more in line with, with some of those rather than trying to go too far as far as time, place, and manner restrictions. The issue is, is that you know if you have a funeral or you have something that is in a public place and it is a somber type of issue, where does that time, place, and manner actually fall into place? And that's that's the, the arguments that have been going forth at the national level, at the state level, in front of the Supreme Court. It was an eight-to-one decision, and I know that Justice Roberts was even the, the one that decided the, or wrote the majority opinion in, in the Supreme Court case. It, it, and, he, and he's a very conservative justice, but it's just an issue of are we going to put meaningful restrictions in there that basically chill any kind of speech that can then be used for other types of speech and restricting that type of speech that somebody may not agree with. And that's what they have to look at. It's not just that case. It's they're going to have to look at what the effect of uh, speech and, and assembly looks like if you apply it to other instances. And if you if you make an exception for, for certain things, does that then justify having exceptions for all sorts of different things that you normally didn't intend. And I think that right now, it, it, coming from the opinions that have been, been ruled on the Supreme Court side, it is something they're just not ready to look at. So if I'm understanding, would, would there then be an effort, you think, to, to circle back and, and redefine the, the definition of what the problem here is? I think that you would have to basically take a look at at how you're going to deal with this, because it's it's not like you're picketing somebody's hall where you can close the doors and it gets quiet. It's outside, it is generally very quiet, and protests, if they are anywhere close, it can be heard and, and can be registered and they, they disrupt. The question is, how far do you have to put those out before it becomes excessive and does that play in other things? It, it's a very complex issue that seems like it's pretty straightforward, but it's, it's a very complex issue on, on how you come up with reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions on those types of speech.
does I guess what I'm asking is, does it have to be a time, place, and manner issue? Can't it be something else like you can't accost someone with the N word or? Uh... Yeah, you can get into that discussion, but I think that if you look at that opinion, it's still there. There are things that that are still protected that people can say that we wish they wouldn't, mm -hmm. and that people do that we wish they wouldn't, and you know, it, it's it's one of those things that with freedom comes responsibility and we're responsible for making sure that we don't impinge on other people's freedoms and sometimes people what they think that they want to practice their those freedoms of speech and freedoms of assembly are things that are absolutely reprehensible but sometimes that's the balance if you if you start cracking down on that then who says that you're not next or something that you care about isn't next and that's I think if you look at, at, at Justice Roberts and his decision and, and some of the decisions that have been passed down before and by both conservative and, and more progressive justices, they all say the same thing. The language is all pretty clear, is that if you're going to have those types of freedoms and you're going to have those guaranteed to your citizens, you have to be very, 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 very careful on how you restrict them if you do. And I think that right now they don't see a reason that they they should put any extreme restrictions on this because of what could potentially happen.